Easy, James here. Now, I haven't uploaded a video in a long time, and the reason being is because I'm actually in the process of filming a couple of tutorials at the moment, and also a couple of Technics videos as well, and they seem to take a long time because there's a lot in them. Um, and, uh, sorry, that bald guy walking up the road really put me off. Uh, <laughs> oh, what was I saying? Yeah, um, Technics videos, yeah, they take a long time, and uh, I only really have a couple of hours a day to do it because I work and everything, so, um, I'm going to do this one in the meantime. Now, I don't want to start throwing out junky videos in the meantime because it's all I've got time to do. Um, but this is a couple of videos I wanted to do for a while. So this being one of them and uh, the next one you'll see in a minute. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I want to keep this short and sweet, not too long. So here we go. Right now, on my living room table, you'll see I've got loads of stuff. Now, before I start, because um, I know I'm going to get loads of comments, so I'll answer the questions now. Speakers. Wolfdale Diamonds. Um, the amp is Yamaha um, AX392. Awesome amp. Um, and this mixer. Oh, don't we all know about this mixer? I think I stressed my opinion on this one when I compared the level meter to my ass. I think. Anyway, um, apart from the fact that the crossfader's now shagged, clearly not designed for scratching. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's a great mixer, but if you remember the uh, equalizer on this thing was absolutely bone and didn't work properly. So what I did was I decided to build my own one. So what this is is a free band equalizer. Um, now what you've got here is got treble, mid, bass and then this bottom one here doesn't work yet because this is a prototype you see. Not pr a proper model of it. So um, this one will control it, it's a sweep frequency, it will control the low frequency. So basically, if you um, turn that right down to there, this will only cut out anything from 20 hertz up to about 40 hertz. Whereas if you turn it up there, it will cut everything from 20 hertz up to about 500 hertz. So technically, if you turn it up like that, you can make it do what this one already does. And then you turn it down to the middle, and that will be an average frequency range for bass. So what I'll do is I will play some music, got my, my phone connected here, and I'll give you a quick demo. So, turn it down for a minute. Um, at the back here, got auxiliary inputs. The phono inputs, it's also got a phono preamp in there. Just flick the little switch. Um, <clears throat> but I haven't got the connectors for that yet because Maplin's are gay and they didn't have any in, so I couldn't get any. Um, and I've got the two outputs here. So I've got the input for my phone, coming out of the output, going into the auxiliary on the mixer, going out into the amp. So, okay, so here we go. Uh, so we've got bass. As you can hear at the moment, is around 20 hertz up to about 200 hertz. So that's quite a good range. That's not exact, but that's about what it is. And then you've got mid, which is 500 up to about 900. And you've got top, which is 1K up to about 4K. Okay, so let me just turn that down a bit. So there you go, and that's pretty, uh, that's it. And the power supply for this, just got um, 240 volts AC coming in here, and then there's a switching power supply in there, which takes it down to obviously the uh, split, it's a split rail power supply, because the op amps in here need split power. What I'll do is, I'm going to take the cover off this thing and I'll give you a quick peek inside so you can have a look at it. Okay, there's the place plate. Uh, place plate. <laughs> there's the face plate, sorry. Uh, albeit plastic, but very, uh, very tough and durable plastic, I've got to say. It's pretty good. Um, on the actual thing, I'll probably use metal, but anyway. Um, all right, okay, now again, prototype. So this is on Perf board, it's called. Uh, so it's basically just board, it's tripadded, so you just put the components in, solder them from underneath. Um, and this is much easier, obviously if I need to make changes here, obviously it's going to be a lot easier to make changes on this perf board than it is to actually um, on a proper circuit board. So um, I've got a little bit of space here, which is for the components I need for that frequency sweep. Um, there you go, that's it, that's the main board, and there's that little switching power supply in there. Uh, the power supply is surge protected, obviously I've got it unplugged. Uh, it's surge protected and spike protected as well, so when you plug it in, it doesn't go pop, which is good. 
Um, that's where the phono connectors will go for that. And I'll use some proper, uh, on the actual thing, I may even have a circuit board here which all the connectors will go onto as well. Um, anyway, so there you go. Uh, now, one more thing I've got in mind for this is I'm thinking of going SMT because all of the components that I've got on here, barring the switches and the pots, I can get in SMT or surface mount technology and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, check this out. This is one of the dual operational amplifiers that I've used in this thing. And here is its SMD replacement part. I can actually fit it on the surface of that chip there, look. <coughs> okay, here's an 8-watt resistor compared to its SMD, which is a lot smaller. Um, TO220, um, a polyfilm cap, and this is the best one, look, a TO92. Look at that. Again, I can actually fit it on the surface of that. So as you can see, these parts are quite a lot smaller than the original parts. Right, just to demonstrate this, okay, here's a bunch of parts, all right? Now here's these equivalent parts quite comfortably sitting on the face of a 20p coin. So as you can see, they're quite a lot smaller. So I'm kind of thinking external power supply, making this thing small and compact. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, sit on the top of your mixer there, kind of about that thin. You know, that's what I'm thinking. So anyway, um, that's, that's beside the point. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you in this video um, is this. Now this is a full working prototype um, of something. Uh, as you can see, turntable here, playing a record. You can see we're on line. So basically, it's a phono preamp, but it's a dual phono preamp, two in one. So basically you've got your phono input there, turntable. In the middle there you've got your little ground connector, phono input there, and then that little jack connector there goes to an output. Now this is a special kind of phono preamp because this is designed to connect into your computer, hence why it's got the little jack connectors there. And you would use a jack to jack cable and connect that in. And I'm thinking time code. So it's a way of getting um, a phono level signal boosted to a line level signal straight into your computer. But um, it does work, but I haven't got any um, time codes to test it out. So I haven't tested it with time code yet, but it works as a dual phono preamp anyway. And the cost to build this thing was like next to nothing. So yeah, I'll give you a quick look inside. There's the lid off and uh, there's a quick look inside it. There you go. And it's on at the moment actually. There you go. So that's it. That horrible looking stuff there is epoxy glue, it's to hold the uh, connectors in place to make sure they stay solid. So there you go, hopefully not a too boring video and I've got a couple of tutorials and that to do, so I'll try and get them up as quick as I can. So there you go, thank you for watching, nice one.